Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is To Back or Not To Back, where we go through a variety of crowdfunding campaigns, talking about what they are, what the games are about, what's in them, the pledge levels, all of that stuff, and of course, should you back it or not. As usual, I'm going to be diving into this stuff. I will say it is a shorter week than usual, which is nice, honestly. I could use a bit of a break. The past few episodes have been, they've all been like an hour long each, which is, I mean, I can do it in the past way back when. If you really go back way back, I used to do these things for an hour and a half at times, and I just couldn't. I just... Going for an hour and a half straight of just covering these campaigns as much as possible, going to as much detail as I possibly can, just too, took, took too much out of me. So uh, I'm glad that they're generally like an hour is now a long episode. And usually like this one might be 30, 40 minutes. That's usually like a shorter episode. We'll see how they go. But either way, we don't have a lot of campaigns to go through, which is nice. We will have links and timestamps to everything down below. And I will say next week, I don't believe I'll be doing a two back and not to back. Uh, next week, I'm going to be actually at the Adam, at the, the Adam, the, at the Gamers Ranch. The Adam is an event hosted by Eagle Griffin Games, by Queen Games, and by Inside Up Games. Uh, and it's Agora for Tabletop Mine, Tabletop Adam, Agora for Tabletop something of mines, something, something like that. I don't remember the exact uh, abbreviation, but it's basically a, a combination of publishers and content creators so they can showcase some new games. We'll talk about that. I'm sure you'll see some footage from that, various collaboration videos, talking about some of the games we were, we were showing and all that stuff. You'll see more information about that. But that does mean that next week, uh, I probably will not have a two back and not a back. I'll be returning on Sunday, which means we'll probably have a... Uh, We'll see how it goes, but I think we're going to have the upcoming crowdfunding campaigns for April instead, which, by the way, I forgot to do that for March, which is the first time ever. Like, I just completely forgot to do the upcoming crowdfunding campaigns for March, which is absolutely bizarre. It's unfortunate. It is what it is. But either way, now that we're like three minutes into the video, let's go ahead and start this off, starting off as usual with our Cult of the Now. Cult of the Now is a segment where we take a look at a currently available game instead of, well... This is a pre-order, but it's close enough. But instead of talking about all these crowdfunding campaigns that are going to be coming in a year and a half, two years, without enough coverage, without enough knowledge if it's a game for you or not, instead we have Nova Roma, which has made its way into the hands of many backers. So you can actually go ahead on Board Game Geek and see a lot of information about to whether this game is for you or not. You're not just relying on content creators. People have gotten their hands on the game. You may have had the opportunity to play this game, and it's over on uh, Game Nerds for thirty-seven forty-seven. if you want to check that out. That is going to be our Cult of the Now. Nova Roma by Stan Kodansky. Definitely recommend taking a look at this one. I very much enjoyed this one when I had a chance to play the uh, prototype way back when. That's Nova Roma for Stan Kodansky. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and start with our Board Game Adjacent category. We have the Ultimate Game Night Bag. The ultimate game night board game. The ultimate game night game board game bag. Uh, 16 days to go on this one. Coming to you from uh, Seth Hayato, from, from Mayday Games. Uh, this is going to be a ultimate board game bag. And I don't know whether this game... Well, let's talk about the basics, okay? This is a game night bag. You can go ahead and store your games in it. You can store mats and cup holders and all these accessories. You can go through the video, check it out. Uh, Rado covers it in depth. The Bowers Game Corner covers it extremely in depth. You can see a lot if this game is for you, if this bag is for you or not. It's going to run you $100 for the bag. It is supposedly made very, very firmly. It's got a lot of, you know, firm firmness to it as far as the uh, uh, the 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 t the weight less the weight test limits on it. You know, they have a whole video of it being on a forklift dragged around and jerked around while holding 75 pounds of sleeves in the bag. Uh, Bowers Game Corner put it to the test as far as trying to like compare this uh, neck to neck with a all play bag, which is uh, very often one of the more common bags you'll see nowadays. Going through it, so I have not gotten my hands on this one at all. But supposedly it is pretty firm, good, holds up, and all that stuff. Supposedly, but either way, it's going to run you $99 for one of them. Or you get savings if you buy more, 190 for two, or 340 for four of them. Savings go down more and more, so you can get it at a more affordable price the more you are getting. And obviously, if you can bundle up with a few like-minded people who want it as well, that's going to be the best way to go ahead and get it at the lowest price possible. Now, that makes, I think there's like three game night bags that are kind of popular out there. There's the all-play one, which I think is generally the go-to bag. Uh, there was the other crowdfunding one that ran campaigns both on GameFound and on Kickstarter. I don't remember what the name of the campaign was offhand, although speaking of which, usual reminder and disclaimer that I do work for GameFound, please take that into account as we go through this video. But past that, yeah, uh, this, this is another bag entering the board game bag market. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the not yet funding category. Now this one, this first one is a bit tricky because this first one is definitely going to fund. Uh, we're at $18,000 raised out of an $18,000 and $347 goal. Meaning this one is so close that genuinely, if it didn't fund, I'm pretty sure the creator would just go ahead and spend $200 to make it go ahead and fund. We have 29 hours to go on this one, so it is tight, but yeah, it's gonna cross that finish line, but it's not technically in the category. It's in the not yet funding category. 
We have 303 backers, and this is Towers. This is a very interesting campaign to cover in a variety of ways. The game itself, before we even get to the game itself, your price point on the game is going to run you $36 on a $90 game, because effectively, he's giving you the game at cost, supposedly. And honestly, looking at the game, I don't think it's a reasonable conversation. I, I don't think it's unreasonable to assume it's in that range of cost. Uh, in terms of getting a bunch of miniatures, dice, the board, cards, all these various things, so the idea that that's coming to you at cost makes sense. The reason he's doing that, he covers on the video, is he's going to go ahead and print a bunch of games, regardless of how many sell over here. He's going to print a bunch of them and then sell the rest of them at his store or whatnot. The, guy, the, the person running this channel over here, bored to death, they have a YouTube channel and a store as well, I believe in Montreal, but I could be mistaken about that. So they plan, they want to kind of bring this to life as much as possible, raise awareness and all that, but then eventually the other copies will be sold at a higher price point in his store himself. So this literally is about bringing a campaign to life. Now that's very interesting for a variety of reasons. Uh, he has run other campaigns, which is a good thing, because if this wasn't for the fact that this is not his first campaign, I'd be telling you to stay far away. The low funding goal over here, combined with the production costs, I would just assume this would never really get made in a typical sense. I would say that uh, be very careful with your money. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not able to lose that $36 plus shipping and all that, then don't back this one. And that's still true, obviously. You should always only ever back things where you can afford to lose it. I think it is likely they'll show up. He has made other games before. This is a very interesting situation as far as bringing it to life. So you're getting it at a good price point in theory. Uh, it's a very, it's a weird one. It's definitely a weird one. The game itself involves these giant uh, dice towers that are traveling around the board. You're going to have quest cards. You're going to have your own like dual layer player boards. Uh, you're going to be rolling dice through your dice tower with the goal to being hitting other players' dice tower, combining your own stats plus the number of the die to see how much damage you deal and all that while you try to wander around the board gather fish accomplish quests all these various things but they're roaming dice towers moving around the board so very interesting and very different game to begin with but even the campaign is very interesting and very different to begin with. So uh, I put this in the category of, I mean, I usually don't focus that heavily on will it hold this value or should you back it on campaigns that aren't yet funded, but this is basically cost and finish line. So I'll say that I, I think this is likely going to hold this value of the $36 because of how cheap it is and relative to other people who might want an opportunity to try it when it's down the road a $90 game. But also, there's not a ton of demand for it, even with all that. Even with all that information, there's not a ton of demand for this. Only a few hundred mil backing it, which puts it in a very weird spot as far as uh, should you back it, should you not? I'd say it's a gamble no matter what you do. It's it's not finding its market even at a way below market cost for the game. And that's definitely a red flag for how popular this game will be. I think it's going to have to be one of those things where if word of mouth carries it, then you got it at a great price point and that'll be great. If word of mouth does not carry it, then if people aren't interested at $36 now, they're certainly not going to be interested at $90 later. And they won't be interested at $36 either later anyways. That's going to be the Towers, a Dice Tower board game. Moving on, we have Fox Experiment Deluxe Wood Edition. Again, another one that will fund, but is not yet funded over here. We have $39,000 raised out of a $50,000 goal. This is going to be the game found campaign for the Fox Experiment. They are bringing it back with specifically a deluxe wooden edition of the game. So the original Fox Experiment had a regular version, a retail edition. They had a plastic or acrylic edition. And now they have the deluxe wooden edition, as well as an upgrade set if you want that as a previous backer. There's 536 backers on this one so far. And it's basically taking the Fox Experiment, which is a roll and write game, a roll and write game, which you are breeding foxes together. You're going to start with a mother fox and a father fox and slowly proceed generationally build out more and more foxes in the game which enter the common pool and then add their their dice and their attributes and traits to the uh, to the genetic pool as you continuously breed better and better foxes which means your your roles in the beginning of the game and your roles at the end of the game are going to be drastically different as far as the strength of those roles uh, past that you're trying to accomplish various car various uh, research cards you're trying to get the favor of various patrons you're trying to get the best scoring fox in each round a bunch of things happening in this uh well, roll and write game that plays across five rounds. Uh, but you're gonna go ahead and get the wooden edition over here. This way, this this ca game pack campaign is specifically to bring you a wooden edition with wooden foxes, wooden dice over here, wooden tokens, wooden everything for the game. Well, not wooden cards. I'm pretty sure the cards are not wooden because the whole roll and write thing wouldn't work great on the uh, wooden cards over there. They have the five six player expansion as well, and all wood over there if you want any of that. That's basically the main thing you're getting over here. You're getting a wooden edition of the game. That wooden edition is gonna run you ninety nine dollars for the whole game and five six player expansion, thirty five dollars for the wooden upgrade kit for previous backers. $49 if you want the 5 to 6 player upgrade kit for previous backers, and then $70 if you just want the uh, regular Fox Experiment Deluxe Wood Edition without the 5 to 6 player expansion. If you don't need the 5 to 6 player expansion, you just want the base game, then $70 will get you the all wood edition for that. As far as should you back or should you not, will it hold this value? Again, it's not, it's probably will fund over here, so I don't have to go into it, but I'll do it right now. But uh, basically, uh, I, I'm skeptical it will. The Fox Experiment is a game that if you look at original backers, original pledges, originally when it first came in, it was holding its value just fine. Over time, it shifted downwards so that people who have paid $60 for the Deluxe 
bucks game now are selling it for 40 50 now instead. So it's one that while initially it was selling for at or above what people paid for it, it is selling less now. And so it's been received generally pretty well. I mean, Mike Galicia has a quote over here, you know, I think this game is better than Wingspan. So there, there, it has been received generally pretty well, but it has not been received amazingly well. Plus they had some production issues as well, which can definitely affect things anyways. So I'd say overall, the price point on this one, obviously if you want this one, it's going to be the easiest way to guarantee getting your hands in it. But I'm skeptical it will hold this value. I think the initial hype and buzz about it landing that made the initial pledges hold this value was present, and I think that's less present now. Moving on into the updates category, we have just one update over here. Not a very large update, update but we have Aetherstone over here from uh, Thundergriff Games. This is one that I actually had after my last video. I kind of talked about how the game interests me, but I wasn't sure if it would or wouldn't land for me. The whole idea of drafting a bunch of powers and abilities and utilizing those to be able to win your opponent reminded me of Seasons, which is a game I like, or reminds me of MTG in general, which is a game I like. And I was very intrigued by it, but wasn't sure if it was for me. And so a viewer actually reached out and said, hey, I'd love to show you the game. And so by now, I've actually had a chance to play this one several times, uh, either zone, and I've overall very much enjoyed this one. I do hope to have review coverage up on the game before the campaign ends, but on the off chance that I don't, the very short notes is I, I think that the combination of the way you are drafting both a leader and then cards around that leader, and the way you're trying to combine abilities really gives you a lot to play with and a lot of room to like continuously want to re-explore different ways of combining cards. I found it very satisfying in terms of the general gameplay back and forth. I think it's not the most intuitive gameplay system, but overall, I definitely enjoy either stone. So on the off chance I don't get a review out, I want to give you my brief th brief notes on the game that I do like it. I think it's a lot of fun, and I'm trying to get a review out before the campaign ends, specifically because I was like, wow, I really... Yeah, I mean, I... Again, I think symbology is a little over the top. I think some aspects of the gameplay are confusing. I think this is one that's still like question. My opinion of holding its value or not has not changed. I think it's a question of whether this can find its audience, but I do think that I am in that audience. Moving on to the new campaigns over here. Starting off with the Dead Keep over here. I wasn't sure exactly where to put this one because this is a pre-order, not really a campaign, but let's go ahead and talk about it and uh, get this one out of the way. This is going to be the Dead Keep from from Simon over here. Uh, launch on Game Found as a pre-order to those who don't know what's going on with pre-orders. Simon uh, has been doing pre-orders for a bit. They previously used to do their campaigns on Kickstarter, and then their pre-orders over on Backerkit. So they have this, a few of them. They've had them for, you know, Monty Python. They've had it for... I'm blanking all of them. Monty Python, they had it for. They had it for Metal Gear Solid. They've had it for other, you know, various uh, expansion packs. They had did it for the second round of Come On Comics or Simon Comics or whatnot. So they've had pre-orders for a while now where you can go ahead and back something, but with less of the fanfare that comes along with crowdfunding. And honestly, if you really think about it, they used to do that with crowdfunding as well. If you want to go really back, uh, Simon has, has generally had two types of campaigns. Campaigns that really go all in on the stretch goals and the conversation and the whole uh, length of the campaign. And then shorter campaigns that they kind of effectively wore pre-orders, like our Arcadia Quest Riders would probably qualify as a pre-order if they had been doing pre-orders back then. Uh, you know, Zombicide Night of the Living Dead would probably qualify as a pre-order, where the, the cost and the bonuses were more shifted, like the various stretch goals and add-ons and all that were much more limited in scope, so it's much more of a fixed campaign. And then slowly but surely they moved those into being pre-orders, and now they're moving those over to GameFound. So there's nothing new going on over here, but the only thing new is that typically they have that distinction, that separation of the way you viewed it, where you had Kickstarter was the campaign, and Backkit was the pre-order. Now GameFound's other campaigns because they've moved over to GameFound, so all the campaigns are over on GameFound, and then the pre-orders are also, which is a little confusing. It's even more confusing because some of their pre-orders have gone live in terms of just generally, hey, here's a pre-order, you can go ahead and get it, and then the Dead Keep was like, here's a pre-order available March 18th, but the, ca the game was there, so any confusion around pre-orders on the platform, totally get and understand that. The very short version is this is a pre-order. You can go ahead and get it. You will get it. As of right now, they're predicting uh, April 2025, so it's going to be a year out as far as when you get it. Obviously, the regular crowdfunding timelines can apply, so no guarantees on the exact timeline you're getting, but it's not going to have a long campaign. When you when you back now, you are backing and getting the game. You are not getting the game now. You're, you're paying the money right away. You're not getting that, you know, holy, it's such a pledge, and then it'll take the money out at the end of the campaign. This is effectively, you are pre-ordering it now. You'll get it in a year. It's a little different than typical crowdfunding, but in other ways, it's the same. So now that we've kind of done that, someone asked a question for a full, someone requested a full breakdown explaining game found pre-orders. I might do so at some point, but in the short term, this should uh, keep you covered on that. But past that, we have the Dead Keep, 9,300 people following the campaign. No idea how many people are back in the campaign. I have no idea. Uh, technically, I could actually find out working for GameFound. I could look into it. I haven't actually done so yet, so I, I have no idea whether uh, seven people have backed this. I assume it's more than seven, or pre-ordered pre -ordered it, or whether uh, 700 or 7,000 people have pre-ordered it. What I will say is the Dead Keep over here, you can check out a bunch of content on the channel in addition to the Conflict of Interest of GameFound. Please take into account that uh, Simon did paid content on this game, a paid review and a paid preview, paid preview, and a paid gameplay on the campaign. 
In addition to those, I did a free unboxing, I'm doing another free gameplay, and I will probably be doing a free review as well, because frankly, I enjoyed the game enough that I want to talk to you about that. But, as far as the campaign itself, we have the Dead Keep over here, $160 for a whole lot of game. And that is a price point that has bothered a lot of people, and I totally get that, we'll go, we'll go ahead and dive into that. But the Dead Keep is a cooperative dungeon diving game for one to six players. It is built on the system of Zombicide. It is basically, I'd say, it's like the rules are like 75% Zombicide, with a bunch of other things that very much make it feel similar and yet different. Honestly, if I was comparing the game, I'd basically say it feels like a combination of mostly Zombicide, a dash of Massive Darkness, and a dash of Cthulhu Death May Die, all brought together in a campaign game that does give you the option for single shot play as you go ahead and gather a group of adventurers, one to six players specifically, to go into the dungeon and then fight off a variety of undead and various monsters while trying to to take down the ultimate boss who will die and then you have to kill him again and he'll die and you have to kill him again and he'll die and you have to kill him again until you eventually go through all his threat cards. Are they called threat cards? Doom cards? I don't remember exactly. Anyways, that's the basic idea of the game. Uh, the action system is going to be very similar to Zombicide with a lot of differences in between as there are things that differentiate it from Zombicide making it feel very much its own entity and yet familiar to those who have played the game. In the game, you enter the keep, you take on the hordes of enemies, you plunder treasures, it is a campaign game, 10 missions specifically. I believe there are 12 missions in the core game, there are 10 missions in the expansion, and I believe Simon has said that they will probably put out more mission uh, missions over time. If you follow them on uh, Facebook or whatnot, they usually have missions for other games that they'll slowly put out various campaigns or options for their games, so they do continue to support and give you content for their games, because I've seen people frustrated that only 12 missions in the core box, well yes, but there's 10 more in the expansion, and there will also be those released as well on Facebook slowly, surely, although they'll have to obviously adapt those into a campaign for them to be as useful, otherwise you're just playing a single shot, and frankly, I think the single shot will be less fun because you don't get to explore all the fun talismans that the game has to offer, another fun ver variant uh, from typical Zombicide. But that's the basic idea of the gameplay. Is it going to be a dungeon crawling game built in the Zombicide system with a lot of differences? As far as the pledge levels for the game, you have $160 for the core game over here, and the pre-order is going to give you a free copy. It's not really free, you're paying for that obviously. A free copy of the pre-order exclusive Secret Alcove box worth $40. That's going to be giving you 32 additional miniatures, in addition to the, I think, roughly 90 or so miniatures in the core box. But there's going to be 32 miniatures, 4 adventurers, 3 notables, 25 undead. Adventurers are the characters you play as, the notables are characters, are enemies that spawn more characters. And then the general undead are going to be more just undead people you're fighting off against. Specifically in this one, you have dwarf crossbowmen and dwarf, or dwarf, um, not crossbowmen, but whatever they're called. Guns, they have guns. The dwarf arquebuses, I don't know, maybe something like that and then Dwarf Swordsman, but they have a different name as well. They all have different names over here. So effectively what you're getting over here is you're back in the game on your pre-ordering. You're pre-ordering the game on GameFound. Uh, you're going to go ahead and get the game, but if the thing you're getting for pre-ordering it now as opposed to waiting for retail, is specifically you're going to be getting this uh, secret Alka box over here, which has a $40 value in theory. That's the conversation over there. Uh, in addition, if you back the expansion, pre-order, Dear Lord, pre-order the expansion for fifty dollars. You'll get the uh, pre-order. You'll get the pre-order exclusive Troll Rider Monster. Uh, I've measured the existing larger monsters. Even the larger monsters right now, I believe, are around seven centimeters or so, somewhere in that range. And this one is nine centimeters, so it's larger, but it's not like a massive monster compared to all the monsters in play. It is going to be a larger beast compared to the beast you have in play. But nothing completely crazy. That's going to be basically what you have over here. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold this value. And this, by the way, this whole campaign. Honestly, maybe I should scroll a bit more. You know what? Let's take a coffee break while I scroll a bit because there's so much stuff to go through. They've done a great job showing you lots of renders, lots of character detail, obviously take into account that a render is not a final uh, miniature or whatnot. Even in my unboxing, I commented on how pristine the miniatures are. They look gorgeous. And of course, you know, it's not the same. It's a uh, resin and whatnot, which means there's a decent chance. Like, C1 has had a range as far as how good their games have been. Sometimes they look absolutely incredible down the road. Other times they've, they're a little bit good, but they're not necessarily as good. They've had a range. Their content usually is, their quality of their miniatures is usually somewhere between good to great with, um, I don't know, I think like Bloodborne had great, uh, Massive Darkness had great, Cthulhu the Medaya is good, you know, Blood Rage had great. There's different campaigns, they've had different ones that are good or great as far as the miniature quality, and I assume these will be at least good. I hope they're great because honestly, the miniatures I have right now and the prototype, the resin stuff, very solid, and I'd love to actually, like, you know, this is like the art, the art from Paul Bonner over here, the entire world building from Paul Bonner. This is great as far as the overall production, and I just hope they can maintain as much of that as possible because these right now, they're renders, and as much as they're good, they're not. Yeah, I hope they can hold on to that as much as possible. 
And I'm just going through more and more miniatures. They do a great job. Yeah, they're Arkbus dwarves. And then they have Zweinhanda dwarves. If that's how you pronounce it. I have no idea. But you have all these various uh, various things you're fighting with or against as you go through this over here. There's lots of fun little uh, the goblin. Uh, the goblin expansion is going to introduce more goblin heroes to play us and goblins to fight against. So you're going to have goblin heroes you're fight, playing us and goblins you're fighting against. You have this guy over here, the goblin lord, who's going to spawn various goblins against you, the various goblin minions. So a whole bunch of stuff in the goblin -y expansion. As well as some quests over here. There's more content. There's colored objectives, red objectives. Quest selection cards, difficulty selection cards, lots of those things being added. We have this giant guy over here, the Troll Rider, which is, again, he'll be red, not this color. This always looks better, though. It's more premium looking. We have to remember that when you go ahead and get this thing, when you pre-order it. I got it right this time. I mean, tons of treasure in the game, tons of talismans, all this stuff. That's basically what we got. So now we can go ahead and, uh, whew, should you back or should you not, we'll hold this value. I realized I talked the whole time. I didn't even have coffee, so didn't even get to do that. It's hard to say. Instinctively, I think it will. Because a lot of people said, hey, this is the price point. This price point is much higher than a typical uh, Simon Kickstarter. It's more expensive, and it's giving you without not not nearly as many stretch goals. So instead of being like, hey, here's a $100 pledge or a $120 pledge and a bunch of stretch goals to go along with it that give you an absolute ton of content, they're giving you less for that. And that is 100% true and 100% fair. Some caveats worth mentioning. Generally, the pre-orders are not as good a value as their crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, I walk into most Simon uh, crowdfunding campaigns expecting and getting a great value. Their pre-orders, I have not backed as strongly because they're not always the same level of value. So the most basic answer I'm going to start with is, I don't think this has the same value as a typical Simon crowdfunding campaign. It is a pre-order. The pre-orders are not as good a value. The second thing I'll say, though, in their favor, that's the thing, if the starting baseline is not going to be as good as you'd expect, but past that, I'll say that uh, the actual the actual core box you're getting over here, while more expensive, has a ton of content. This is going to be, again, uh, in terms of the amount of miniatures, the amount of tiles, the amount of content you have, there's a lot of content being given here. This is more than the typical starting base box of Zombicide. You basically have the combination of, you know, a Zombicide system, plus the, if you were looking at Zombicide Black Plague, you have a combination of Zombicide Black Plague, plus the Deadeye Walkers, plus the uh, Wolfsburg expansion, all mixed into a single box, and that's the price point for that, which makes it much more reasonable, especially when you're getting that extra free expansion that you're paying you're again factored into the price and all that so while i do think this is not the same level of value that you're looking at in a typical crowdfunding campaign i also think comparing it to a standard zombicide core box is not a fair comparison there's much more that you're getting in this game as far as should you back or should you not will hold this value if that content is actually exclusive if the pre-order extras are actually exclusive from the troll to the extra content over there you're getting then i think it will I think this is a good game. I've played a lot of uh, Simon's titles. I've played a lot of Zombicide. I've played a lot of Master of Darkness and a lot of Cthulhu that may die. And this really feels like they're kind of leaning into a combination of all of those in a way that really works, really delivers, at least so far. I do not think it's an absolutely essential game that you have to get your hands on, but there's a lot of people out there that like Zombicide. There's a lot of people out there that like their systems. I think the reviews for this one will be very positive because it really feels like they're iterating well on what they do and continuing to develop along those titles. And I think that means that the exclusive content that's over here, as much as it is annoying to sit there and be like, well, I'm not getting as good a value as a typical Simon campaign, which is true. You, I do think it still will hold its value because the exclusive content that you're paying more for now is something that people will want to hunt down later on this title. I hope they continue to support this title. I, I, I really enjoy what they're doing it so far. I think they, I hope they give you a lot of content and continue to support it. But the fact that they're even just giving you a starting baseline of giving you a bunch of various enemies to fight off against with a bunch of monsters combining in a really streamlined system, I really, uh, I think this one is not as good of a value as a typical Simon campaign and still worth considering for your backing dollar. Moving on, we have Shogun, Revisation from Queen Games over here. 530 backers, $70,000 raised, nine days to go. This one's doing fairly well for them. Uh, their campaigns are always interesting. They continuously reprint and adjust and give more content and tweaks and revised edition and big box edition and all that for their games. This one focusing on Shogun. They have you know, the revised edition. They have an upgrade kit. They have a big box with the revised edition. They have a big box with the revised edition. They have the Wallenstein, which is basically Shogun, but a different setting and some minor rule changes. All those things to go through over here. Uh, should you back or should you not? And, well, and Shogun, I'm, I'm kind of going through this quickly. Queen games are hard to give the same level of coverage for in a campaign because of the fact that they effectively... What they do is they constantly put out the same games in their campaigns again and again and again that I don't really want to sit there and explain Shogun every time they decide to do a reprint campaign of Shogun. So I usually go through their campaigns a bit faster unless they have something new. In the case of Shogun, it's a really well done area control game. It has stood the test of time very well. It's from uh, Dirk Hen, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it basically involves you planning out your moves on this board in ancient Japan or in Wallenstein, I believe is Germany, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but really well done system that is a lot of fun. Lots of positive coverage around the game. It is a game worth looking at if you haven't had the chance to table it. 
But as far as this campaign over here, uh, this basically as far as should you back or should you not will hold this value. This stuff's expensive, and I mean, it's not cheap in general, but I'd say that in general, if you want to get this specific version, again, there's stuff uh, very often the easiest way to do so. But if you're looking at holding this value, there are games a little bit less so. Like right now in the secondary market, you can get a copy of Big Box Shogun for like $85. You're not getting that for the upgrade kit or whatnot, but again, if you're not fussy about exactly what you're getting, you'll be able to get the stuff a lot cheaper. If you specifically want the new stuff with the upgrade stuff, well, there's this campaign, or the next time they decide to reprint it instead. Moving on we have over here we have super boss monster 6400 backers 591000 dollars raised 11 days to go this is basically a backwards compatible Super Boss Monster, the newest content for, for Boss Monster, basically taking the Boss Monster system that's been around for a very long time, had a ton of expansions, where basically you are fighting, you're, you're fighting, you're playing as a boss, you're creating a dungeon and trying to attract heroes into your dungeon where they have to go through a sequence of traps and hopefully die, I mean, hopefully for you they die, as you try to attract them into your dungeon. That's the basic core idea of the game. The heroes are gathering up in the village, you have multiple players all creating their dungeons, attract them in over there. Uh, this Super Boss Monster over here gives you a bunch of new things, including a new center village board, a new ways to like have a a little bit of degree of worker placement on your characters or little minions or whatnot. It takes all the core systems and it gets backwards compatible. If you have all the content for the game, this is backwards compatible. You can utilize in that. In fact, they have a whole big box they are actually selling with all the versions and expansions of the content as well. But basically, Boss Monster streamlined. It has new solo play. So if you if you if you want to play this game solo, they now have that as an option as well. That's a big thing as well. That's probably going to make this uh, more appealing to people, bring them to the table. And it's been a game that's been around for a very long time. And they have a stretch goal pack over here, a Kickstarter exclusive card pack with basically a bunch of promo cards to reward people for backing the campaign while trying not to uh, you know take too much into the actual core content, making sure people. Will have a very fun, a very fine, very finished game if they back this at retail or if they get it at retail, uh, but also trying to give you a reward if you back it on crowdfunding. As far as the campaign options, you have $30 for the core box over here, the Super Boss Monster. We have $45 if you want the playmat and tokens over there. We have $75 if you want the Boss Monster big box that holds all your content, as well as all the previous content over there, as well as the previous puzzle levels. And we have the $90 final boss if you want the individual neoprene mask for each player, and the $175 is going to give you a copy of each of the various expansions at a, redu at a reduced rate, considerable discount from MSRP. I will say, full transparency, I have not looked at the full MSRP cost of all the individual expansions to see how good of a deal that actually is. I'm taking them at face value, that's a considerable discount, but also Boss Monster is stuff that you can get fairly cheaply on the second market, although trying to hunt down the exact specifications is where it's going to be a little more tricky. Uh, as far as should you back or should you not, will it hold this value? When it comes to Boss Monster, it, when it first came out, it held its value great. When it first came out, people were paying to get all the exclusive content for the game. Uh, but over time, there's been so much Boss Monster out there that it hasn't done as good of a job holding its value in a while. You can generally get the stuff fairly cheap on the second hand market. It's been around for so long. Like, it's had a million copies sold, which is great for them, but it does mean that over time, this game has, has flooded the second hand market a lot and is very readily available. And that does mean that as far as the campaign goes, the 6,400 people backing it, I don't think it will hold its value. It's not a guarantee because, again, they do have Kickstarter exclusive content over here which is a big deal and they have a lot of people who do want the game so it could be enough to push it over but on a smaller price point game once you factor in the shipping and all that it, it comes down to how many people actually care enough about that later and i'm skeptical it'll hold this value although obviously if you are a boss monster fan and you just want to make sure you get it the campaign is usually the fastest easy way to get it while supporting the creator at the same time moving on to river valley glassworks 3,600 backers, 11 days to go, $293,000 raised on River Valley Glassworks, basically uh, uh, from all play, a game from all play about collecting glass that's very, a lot of people are comparing it to Azul, even they compare it to Azul, like one of the, the quotes is like, this is an Azul killer, so they're not shying away from that comparison, this is definitely a Azul style game of collecting glass and trying to optimize your points, but it's done very differently than Azul. Also as usual, full transparency, we have done paid content on this game, Board Game Co has done paid content on this game, you can check that out if you want to see a gameplay or whatnot, there will be a review as well. If you feel a little icky about that, paid content plus review, totally get that. I talk about it in the beginning of the review. If it's not for you, totally respect that. Past that, as far as the the, the pledge itself or the game, the game itself, the game basically involves you collecting glass from a river. On your turn, your most common action is going to be selecting glass from one of these tiles and then refilling the tile and moving things down the river. Occasionally, when you run out of glass, you're going to be instead be gathering glass from the river section over here and then refilling it as well from the bag. And the goal is to try to gather sets of glass, put them onto your player board, trying to fulfill the scoring objectives because you want different sets of glass to be able to score for your rows, but you want the same sets of glass to score for your columns, you have to be very careful how you do it because if you score too much of the common glass, effectively, then of your earlier columns, then you actually won't get as many points. So a little bit of a puzzly system as far as how you actually try to score points in this to make sure you're not shooting yourself in the foot as you gather glass. Yes, there are times in this game where you can gather glass that'll actually lower your score because of what you got instead of raising your score. That's the way this game plays out. 
So lots of interesting decisions to make over there. Uh, illustrated by Andrew Bosley, uh, designed by Adam Hill, Ben Pinchback, and Matt Riddle over here. And that's the basic core concept of the game. There's a lot of extra stuff as well, but the core concept of the game is exactly everything I just told you. You get the game plays incredibly quickly. Uh, you can see our, our gameplay video is like, you know, 25 minutes. We got two games in in that time frame. Uh, you can play it on Board Game Arena as well. You can get a sense for if it's a game for you if you want to see if it's your type of game. And as far as the pledge levels over here, there's a lot of ways to get this game as well as additionally getting the Lure game as well. The small box game is available in this. So speaking of which, the pledge levels over here going to be $19 for the Lure game over here. Lure is a game of trying to uh, basically try to gather and fish, but you're bidding your dice. The problem is when you bid your dice in the game, that the lower, the, the fewer dice you bid, the, uh, the earlier you have a chance of actually gathering the fish. The problem is the more dice you bid, the higher chance of actually catching the fish. So it's a little bit of a push your luck game of how low can you go and do you think you can get the fish or not, or will you miss out because you didn't bid high enough? Uh, that's the core concept of Lure. It's gonna be one of the small box games, similar to Chomp, Mountain Goats, any of the other small box stuff. That's gonna be $19 for that, and you also get the expansion included. They have a little small mini expansion. Then we have the River Valley Glassworks. It's $39 for the retail edition of the game. In general, if you're just getting it at retail, I do generally encourage waiting for retail. You'll get a little bit cheaper, you'll be able to to like, you know, get second-hand copies and all that. Uh, over here, we have Retail Plus Lure for $56, so that $19 copy of Lure instead becomes a $17 copy of Lure, which I believe holds true across the board, meaning it's either $19 by itself or $17 in any of the other pledge levels, so you're basically saving $2 on Lure if you get both of them together. You have $69 for the deluxe copy of River Valley Glassworks. The deluxe copy is going to have a few things. It's going to have a playmat. It's going to have clear acrylic tiles. In fact, let's go ahead and scroll down. Let's go ahead and show you all these stuff you get over here. So Retail Edition gives you the box, the river tiles, the lake board, and the drawstring bag. 132 acrylic river glass pieces. Five inventory markers, five satchels, and then we have over here, we have the deluxe edition, which gives you a nicer box, the spot UV and gold foil. It gives you six acrylic river tiles to be able to uh, slide along a play map that you're going to get that fits in the box, which is a beautiful thing. We have the deluxe glass bag, we have the five dual layer play player dual layer player boards, with the five dual layer river pans, and the five inventory markers as well. That's all the stuff you get in the deluxe copy of the game, so that's what you're getting for that roughly $20 upgrade, I think it is. $39 to $69, $30 upgrade to go out and get that. Then over here we have Deluxe Plus Lure for $86, which again, $17 for the copy of Lure. We have $89, which is an additional $20 on top of the Deluxe to get the Founders Edition, which we'll show you in a second, and then $106, which again, an additional $17 to get Lure. That's gonna be the highest pledge you have over there. And I think the most backers with the 1,032, is that the most backers? We have 862, we have 362, 722, yeah, the most backers are coming in at that premium price point. So what do you get for that additional $20? You get a Founders Edition box sleeve, and then 132 real glass pieces. Basically, they took all the acrylic pieces of glass and they're upgrading them to real glass. So if you do want this game and you want the most premium version of the game, that's definitely the one you're going to want to look at, which is obviously going to be the one that costs the most, unfortunately, but it is the most premium version of this game. That's basically what you got over here. We have also the exclusive first player token. We have some expansion stuff. All the very stretch goal stuff has been bundled into the uh, River Glass and other Sundries expansion, which is basically a bunch of modules. We have assistance. We have uh, we have assistance. We have equipment over here. We have lake diving module. We have the uh, orders from afar. This one, actually, I haven't played with any of the modules, but I want to. Orders from afar is the most intriguing because you're intentionally going to try to get glass into your overflow, which is usually an area you're trying to avoid. So I love the idea of that. But then past that, you also have the River Treasures over here. We have the flooded market. So an entire color of glass you want to Void. lots of interesting things that are going to change up the way you play the game and there's a solo mode as well on top of that and then a whole host of video previews if you want to dive into it should you back it should you not will it hold this value this is not your typical on-play campaign. It's very different than your typical on-play campaign, in fact, because usually they have three games. It's very standard. They don't have 17 versions of it. They usually have a deluxified expansion stuff, but it's usually separate from the core game. They don't usually make the deluxe games themselves. Uh, this one is very different. Uh, I, instinctively, I think the retail edition is going to be the one that does not hold its value the most. The other versions of the game, I think, will. And it's not. I'm not confident, confident, because if you look at the ratings on BGG, again, don't forget, people have had access to this one because they're playing on a boarding arena. There's definitely been a mix. There are a lot of people who are really appreciating what the game is doing. And then there's people who are not as enamored by the game. Personally, I'm in the camp of I do think this one is more accessible. I think it's easy to dive into. I, I think it has the charm of Sagrada, of Azul. And I think it's an easy to play game with a beautiful art, beautiful presentation. And I think the deluxe copy of the game is going to be one people are going to want to hunt down in general. Trying to get your hands. Imagine if you could buy Azul with like, you know, extra levels of deluxification on top of it. Where they have that big box version at one point and that sells for incredibly high amounts. So it does come down to a certain extent to how well received this game is and how well it hits the market. But I do think instinctively that harder to get your hand, harder to get your hand on content from the deluxe editions of the game will make this one one that holds its value, especially once you factor in all the extra you're getting, the Kickstarter exclusive stuff, the expansion stuff, the uh, you know uh, the all stretch goals, all play medallion, all those. Speaking of all play medallion, the all play medallion which you get at the highest pledge level only, I believe, that is basically going to be something you get that earns you a copy of one of those small box games. To be very clear. 
they have their box games, their small box games, and their small box games. So you can get one of their smaller box games that I don't know if they're out yet, but you do. Here we go. Here we go. We have Panda Panda, Rainbow, Fairy, or Prey are some of the options over. So you can trade in the medallions you get at their higher pledge levels. Basically, they're giving you something for, for back in the higher tiers, you get something, and you can trade that something in to get something free down the road. So not, again, not free, but take factor that into your pledge levels. So that's basically what we have for all, for, for River Valley Glassworks and All Play. I do think the higher tiers are likely to hold a value, but also not a guarantee. It is a little different, a little branch out from what all play typically does. Moving on, we have Wequiem, Downfall of Magic. 1,591 backers over here. I'm realizing this video is going to be slightly longer. No, we have two campaigns. It's going to be like a 40 minute range. Nothing crazy. Requiem, Downfall of Magic. 1,593 backers, $245,000 raised, 11 days to go. This is coming from Ludus Magnus Studios, which is do means it's doing a little less ideally than a typical Ludus Magnus game, unfortunately. Or unfortunately for them, I guess. Uh, but Ludus, but the Requiem, Downfall of Magic is going to be a somewhat story driven game with a lot of mechanics as well so lots of choose your own adventure it's going to be a campaign game you'll be playing through it over here as you take control of a variety of characters and dive into this world of magic with some scary characters and a team of people that are all part of some secret society that, that, that you're a member of the order and you're trying to take down this new threat as you wander through the forest over here going through a sequence of missions and then each constantly engaging with the various decks as you explore the regions explore the territories trying to uncover the secrets and then deal and face off against the various baddies it is much more player driven in the sense that as you encounter enemies they're not really hunting you down in the typical sense more Often than not, they're a bit more passive, but they are obstructing you and getting in your way. You can check out full coverage on the channel, as well as the full gameplay, and of course, disclaimer, that I did do, uh, Board Game Code did do paid content around this game, sponsored content, there was a sponsored gameplay on the channel. But past that, that's basically uh, the uh, the core idea of Requiem over here in Downfall of Magic, and a lot of things going on past that, because over here, starting with the pledge levels, we have 59 euro for the Adventurer Pledge, and 59 euro for the Magician Pledge. These are two pledges that don't actually get you the game per se, they're not getting you, just to be very clear, if you are a backer of those, and you think you're getting a Requiem Downfall of Magic, Magic, you are not. Rather, the Adventure Pledge is for people who want to use Requiem Downfall of Magic content in their in their Nova Aedas Renaissance world, and similarly with the uh, the Magician Pledge, same exact concept, but for Black Rose Wars. So this is going to be bundling up the content that you can use from Requiem Downfall of Magic and use it in other worlds. Now you could get that those things for cheaper if you are buying Requiem Downfall of Magic. Meaning, if you go ahead to this pledge level over here, 149 euro for the order, that's going to give you Requiem Downfall of Magic as well as various stretch goals and extras and things you get in the campaign. But if that point, if you do want to get the content, the uh, crossover content for their other two games, for Nova Edis and Black Rose Wars, then you're only paying, I think, I believe it's 18 euro for each thing. In fact, even that, uh, if you do want to get both of these, if you want to get Magician and uh, Adventurer, it's not even going to count the cost the full amount. It'll cost 18 additional euro for the second one that you get. So it's 59 euro for the first one, 18 euro additionally for the second one. Basically, think about it as you need the content, you need the physical content, and then you need the crossover content. So once you have the physical content in any form, either one of the crossover kits or from the base game, then it's only 18 euro for each additional thing. That's going to be a bit of stuff going on as far as the game over here. Past that, they got some beautiful miniatures, some beautiful sculpts, uh, some uh, various characters are playing, uh, playing out in the game. There can be some expansion content, some, some, some stretch goal content, we have our, you know, these are the enemies you're fighting off, we have Cosmo, we have the High Guard, we have the, the, the Growl, the Arkbusa, the Cultists, the uh, Nachtclap over here, these various crow, crows you're fighting off against, uh, you're going to have a ton of content over here as far as the stretch goals, we have our Gifts of Death stretch goals with Reysa and, uh, and Gaspard and Mar Margret over here, and alternative Nachtlachs over here, more sculpts over here, we have Fester, a new dog to play as, a prisoner, a new companion you're free, all that's going to be what we have currently unlocked, I believe theoretically more can be unlocked, they cover the campaign page if you're unsure go ahead and back and you know as the campaign develops you can see if you want to keep your pledge one depending once the full amount of stretch goal content is shown that's a relevant point because as of right now i don't think it's worth it but that might change as the campaign goes on we have selene over here as a, you know, Selene over here, the giant 18 centimeter miniature. We have Selene D over here, these smaller ones. And then we have a bunch of, what else we have? We have gameplay. If you scroll past that, why pledge now? That's where they cover, you know, pledge now. And if you want to drop your pledge, go ahead and do so. We have the Abomination Quest. This is something that all the backers are working together to go ahead and create uh, this miniature that they're going to adjust the sculpt and details as you go through it. They're going to be creating the miniature together effectively with the, with the community. And then we have the stretch goals in a different form down here. And then we should have uh, the optional buys. We have the pledges, the order for 149 euro, magician for 59 euro, adventure 59 euro over here and then we have all these various uh, options for the crossover kits where you can see the different configurations of the crossovers and which combination works for you so for example if you want everything it's going to run you uh, 167 no 100 and both crossovers going to be 185 euro to get you the base game and both crossovers 185 euro for that and then we have some additional other, you know, optional buys in the campaign as well. That's going to be additional stuff to go through here. As far as should you back or should you not, will hold this value. I'm skeptical it will currently. And that might change as the campaign goes on. But right now, the price point versus what you get 
is a little high compared to a typical Ludus Magnus Studios campaign. And keep, keep in mind, I'm fully aware we just covered the Dead Keep where I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'll still hold this value. And part of that is the Dead Keep does give you a lot more content than, than Requiem does. If you look at the amount of content, they're both looking at a price point in the $150, $160 range as a base price point with some stretch goals being added. But the sheer amount of content you get in the Dead Keep is much higher. Plus, I think the demand for a Zombicide type game, Zombicide as a system just has so much more demand, which is why I'm a little less confident in Requiem and much more confident in the Dead Keep. I'm not saying it won't hold its value. It, it's possible it will. There is a demand for Lewis Magnus Studios games. They put out quality games, and I have enjoyed playing this one. They put out quality games with some of the best looking miniatures in the business. Like, I think Lewis Magnus Studios and Mythic Games had the best looking miniatures in the sheer attention to detail on the sculpting. And Mythic Games obviously is um, no more. Hopefully, Lewis Magnus Studios is you know, doing well as far as that goes, but their miniatures are beyond incredible looking. So there is demand for that. And you combine that with the demand for the uh, content for the crossover content, there is potential aspect for this one to hold its value. I just think the price point relative to what you get compared to a typical Ludus Magnus Studios game, especially when you can look at the fact that their games as time has gone on have held the value a little less and less as the market gets more and more saturated. So I think that this is one where I'm less confident it'll hold its value. It might, but I'm definitely less confident. Moving on, we have Reign of Hades from Legend Crafters. This is a campaign over on GameFound, 1,200 backers, 155,000 euro raised, 18 less days left to go. This is a cooperative game as you go through a campaign game fighting off in 20 event, 20, I think it's 20 missions, as you go ahead and uh, tackle enemies in this simultaneous kind of team-based play. You can play it as a two-player game, you can play it as teams, you know, two teams, and it's, uh, you're cooperative, but effectively the teams are operating almost independently, uh, choosing their actions simultaneously, taking their actions. There is a dedicated solo variant is instead, if you are someone who's going to be playing it solo, there is that. It's from the team, uh, it's from Richard Amon over here and Attila Sumegi, and Richard Amon is the co-designer and creator of Anachrony, Tecarian, Cerebia, and Perseverance. So definitely coming with a uh, some degree of, 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 of uh, no, not notoriety, some degree of, um, there's a term that I'm blanking on, something, um, there's a term, darn it, when you are coming to the table with, I'm blanking on the term, there's a term for when you're coming to the table with uh, a prestige, no, not prestige, maybe something else. Anyways, uh, that's basically what's going on as far as the game. As far as the extras, if you back it on GameFam, you're looking at the world map over here, the Hades Metal Coin, the Kill Count Marker, and the Deluxe Edition in general is going to be something that's available right now in limited quantity after the campaign through direct sales channels. So if you want, even though the game itself, they hope to bring it to retail, the Deluxe Edition is going to be much more limited in its availability. We have 15 euro for this dice tower over here. We have stretch pay, installments, all those various things. And the pledge level is going to be 74 euro for the basic edition of the game, 94 euro for the add-in, which gives you the uh, additional two characters over here, uh, $149, which goes jump here, 119 euro for the Deluxe Edition, which gives you the Deluxe Edition and all that content mixed in, and then 149 euro, which is basically giving you the extra dice and the acrylic tokens as well. And that's a 10 euro savings on buying them individually, because you could buy a bunch of these things in add-ons. There's a bunch of stretch goals of things that have been unlocked locked already. We have the various add-ons, so you can see the extra dice pack, we can see the actual tokens, the dice tower, the wash for miniatures. For 20 euros, you can get a wash on all your miniatures, making them, you know, stand out a bit more. They have before and after, you know, uh, pictures of, of the wash. And that's basically what we have over here as far as this campaign cam campaign uh, game with 20 scenarios and uh, simultaneous play between teams over here. As far as you back, so you're not, will hold this value. It's hard to say. Uh, this one is expensive enough that I'm definitely not confident. In it. It's also coming to you from a team that has a lot of whatever that word that I can't think of is a lot of um bothers me not gravitas not prestige they're coming to the table with I can't remember the word I'm gonna it's gonna bother me all day anyways it is a game that could well hold its value if the game is good enough and if it's hard to get your hands on some of the stuff it's one that the price point is such that it could hold its value but I also think that amount of content you're getting for the price point similar to a Requiem before it makes it in a slightly harder position it's not as expensive as Requiem but it's still not cheap for the amount of content you're getting out of this one so this one is definitely in that firm uncertain camp I'm just not certain as far as will it hold its value or not and that is basically everything we have as far as the campaign it just means it's time for the picks of the week picks of the week in general I take I pick two one that I think is the game not think. One of that is the game that I most personally am interested in, and two is the game that I think will most hold its value. Uh, this is one of those weeks where both together, where, where the same game would win both of those. We have the Dead Keep over here, which I think is the most likely to hold its value, and also my personal interest pick of the week. But I'm actually going to keep this one as my personal interest pick of the week more so, because whenever I, whenever the same game would get both, I usually kind of branch it off. Uh, the Dead Keep is definitely my personal interest pick of the week. From uh, I've played a bunch of the games 
we've talked over here. I've played Shogun. I've played uh, Etherstone, Dead Keep. Uh, I've played uh, River Valley Glassworks, Requiem. I've played most of the game games we're talking about today, and the Dead Keep easily far and away is my favorite. Although, take into account, I've been a huge fan of uh, Zombicide, Mass of Darkness, Clear May Die, so I'm definitely the target audience for this game. And as far as holding its value, I'll go ahead and give that one to River Valley Glassworks. Uh, again, it's not a con not a hundred percent certainty, but honestly, nothing am I a hundred percent certain on today. Even the Dead Keep is is one that I am most certain of, but it, as a pre-order with a lesser value than normal campaigns, even that one's not a hundred percent certainty. So I'd say the more deluxe versions of River Valley Glassworks, I think, are more likely ver worth it. But uh, I take. And as far as the value pick this week, it's definitely a little shakier on any game I would pick. That's basically what we have as far as the games coming up next week. We have, an, again, nothing. It's going to be a light week. Like, I'm skipping next week any, anyways, like I said already. But I think it's going to be a lighter week. I couldn't find a lot of large campaigns launching. We have Hero of the Sanctum, the strategy card game with, like, 912 followers. We have uh, the Arena of Barrow Durham on GameFound with 723 people following. Uh, there's not a lot of big campaigns launching next week. I mean, these are, that, that'll help these uh, smaller creators to be able to get a bit more of a foothold as far as not having a ton of competition. But it will probably be a lighter week next week which means i will see you in two weeks and until next time i'm alex radical from board game co hope you enjoyed this video and as always i hope you have a good one Whew. Generally, the words I'm sorry and I apologize mean the same thing, except when you're at a funeral. <laughs>